Hi and welcome back. So following the last video I uploaded on Dave Pascoe and his daily routine, and as a quick aside, Dave Pascoe is a gentleman who's currently beating Brian Johnson in his rejuvenation Olympics. I had quite a few comments asking if I would also cover his diet, his supplement regimen, and also his fitness regimen. So this is the first of those videos, and in this video, I'm gonna cover Dave Pascoe's meal plan which will include the ingredients of the food that he eats and where applicable, I will also use the brands that he prefers to use. So let's kick off with his breakfast meals. First of all, his weekday breakfast. This consists of one green banana, then four heaped serving spoons of his chia nut berry bowl with additional unsweetened almond milk. The ingredients of this chia nut berry bowl are chia seeds that are soaked overnight in unsweetened almond milk, raw and salted almonds, Brazil nuts that are dry roasted and unsalted, cashew nuts that are raw and unsalted, and flax seeds which are freshly ground, as well as hazelnuts that are dry roasted and unsalted, and hemp seeds that are raw and hulled, macadamia nuts which are roasted and salted, pecans that are raw and unsalted, pine nuts raw and unsalted, pistachios roasted and salted, pumpkin seeds that are raw, sunflower seeds that are raw and unsalted, and walnuts that again that are raw and unsalted. He then adds organic berries, starting with frozen blueberries and raspberries, and when in season, some of his homegrown goji berries. Then it's in with some beetroot powder, camu camu powder, maca powder, mangosteen powder, spirulina, Himalayan tarte buckwheat, nutritional yeast, and what he says is a lot of extra virgin olive oil. Let's now look at the spices that he adds, starting with basil, then cardamom, cayenne, chili powder, cinnamon, cilantro, cumin, ginger, lemon thyme, oregano or oregano, parsley, rosemary, sage, summer savoy, tarragon, and turmeric. And he poses the question, are all these various nuts, seeds, and spices necessary? He says, necessary, no. Beneficial, I believe, yes. Any small subset would be just fine, but I personally like to go for the maximum nutritional density and also diversity. He goes on to say that science is still learning new things every day, even about things that we thought we fully understood, like water. Food compounds such as phytochemicals, alkaloids, flavonoids, carotenoids, lectins, etc., have only just entered into our collective consciousness. And he says this has been done relatively recently. No one that I know had ever heard of these things when I was a kid. For some reason, we try to isolate only the good compounds and get more of them in supplements or, worse yet, patent pharmaceutical drugs from their derivatives. He says this completely ignores the fact that these things are far more often effective and have less negative side effects when consumed in their original form. For these reasons, I opt first for the whole food forms of these nutrients. Whole foods provide us with everything, including the things we don't yet understand and the things we now only think we understand, even if that is mistakenly. And this is why I regularly test my macronutrient status to verify that I'm not over or under doing the things that we do currently know about. His weekend breakfast is on a Saturday at home, again, one green banana and a four egg omelet with arugula and pre-cooked mushrooms. On Sunday at church is a goat omelet with three eggs and also hash browns. So that's the most important meal of the day, allegedly out of the way. Let's move on now to what he eats for lunch. He says he only eats lunch a few times a week, but when he does, it consists of one or more of the following. One can of wild planet sardines, one can of Matisse mussels, one can of crown prince oysters, one can of wild planet mackerel, and then eight to 10 pre-cooked thawed frozen shrimp. Then it's one avocado, one green apple, one pear, one orange, a few raw baby carrots, and chunks of celery stalk used like chips to scoop up hummus or chicken or beef bone broth. Now let's take a look at his dinner. He says that dinner is usually between 3 and 5 p.m., but it always ends before 6 p.m. at night. All of his meat comes from butcher box and is organic, grass-fed, grass-finished, 
free range, pasture raised or wild caught. He says he's still experimenting, but he's got the following items down pretty well. He starts with a very large pre-made salad that he says he makes once or twice a week, which consists of a mix of organic greens such as arugula, baby spinach, baby spring mix, Swiss chard from his garden when it's in season, a mix of homegrown sprouts and microgreens, broccoli, fenugreek, lentils, mung beans, peas and radish. He then adds berries from his yard when in season, otherwise it's store-bought and organic when possible. And he starts with blueberries, then raspberries, blackberries, and again goji berries provided that they're in season and he gets these from his yard. Then it's on to shredded organic vegetables, firstly beets, then cabbage, carrots, parsnips, radishes, turnips, chopped tomatoes, again from his garden when they're in season, sliced cucumber, whole green olives, goat cheese, nutritional yeast, and then a chicken breast in extra virgin olive oil and or thawed pre-cooked shrimp. He adds a dressing to this of apple cider vinegar and even more extra virgin olive oil. Then a blend of cold pressed organic oils consisted of black cumin oil and then a five seed blend of black sesame oil, coriander oil, flax oil, sunflower oil and also pumpkin oil. This is then followed by one of the following meat selections. Number one, a slow cooker meal, such as chuck roast, cooked with baby carrots, purple, yellow, and white onions, a mix of purple petite potatoes, sweet potatoes, and yams. Then cayenne pepper, red pepper flakes from his sister's garden, garlic, again, which is homegrown, and freshly chopped homegrown herbs, and this is rosemary, oregano, and basil. Or still number one, pork ribs cooked with sauerkraut, baby carrots and fresh chopped homegrown herbs again, rosemary, oregano, oregano or and or basil. Moving on to meal option number two and this is a new wave infrared oven grilled meal such as Atlantic wild caught salmon. He says this is quick to thaw and also very quick to cook so he says he has this quite often. Or grass-fed ground beef seasoned with Mrs Dash. Or option three, instant pot pressure cooked chicken breasts. He says he has a choice of sides, starting with instant pot pre-cooked sweet potatoes and yams. Again, these are homegrown when in season. Or instant pre-cooked acorn squash. Again, homegrown when in season. Or instant pot pre-cooked mushrooms consisting of baby bella, shiitake and white button mushrooms. He said he would gladly include other mushroom types if he could find them. The next side option is instant pot pre-cooked rice, a mix of various varieties cooked in cast off mushroom juice and chicken or beef bone broth. This includes long grain rice, brown rice, short grain brown rice, basmati, sushi rice, red jasmine rice, purple rice, black pearl, wild rice and sometimes quinoa. His final side option is steamed broccoli. He adds that all his vegetables, the rice and his mushrooms usually get doused with grass-fed butter. He explains that he will begin to use ghee again next time he spots it in his local health food store. He says he doesn't always eat at home, so he can't always eat as cleanly as this. He says when I'm out in a restaurant, I mostly opt for the healthier option. Something low-carb that isn't deep-fried or charred, and has no sweetened glaze or sauce with a good number of vegetables. And a plain salad with absolutely no dressing. Things like salmon, mushroom enchiladas, or fungi pizza. Or when he's at Ford's Garage, which is a themed restaurant, he will drink water with lemon, or an unsweetened tea with lemon, or a new beer that he's never tried before, or an Atwater Dirty Blonde beer. He says, yes, I do drink alcohol occasionally. He tends to start with berries and gorgonzola salad with no dressing, and he says that's actually a meal on its own. Then he orders a mushroom Swiss burger with Angus beef, cooked medium, including an avocado and an egg, sunny side up. He says that if he's in a low carb refeed cycle, he will go ahead and order the mac and cheese option. He also drinks a home brewed lemon tea. He says he pre makes this weekly and he stores it in a 64 ounce glass bottle. This is made of four large fresh squeezed lemons with 32 ounces of three stage reverse osmosis filtered water. 
He says this used to have two tea bags of various organic teas, but as of the 28th of February 2024, he's removed all teas from his diet as the polyphenols and tannins were blocking his vitamin B uptake, showing that he is a consistent experimenter. So at present, he just adds eight caps of humic and fulvic minerals, eight caps of aloe vera juice, and half a cup of apple cider vinegar. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Let me know what you think of his meal planning and also his diet regimen. I think that when he does eat, he does eat an awful lot of food. I'd be interested to see what you say in the comment section below.